Every day I thought I would change the location. I go to downstairs. You can kind of see the Christmas tree in the background, get a little festive. Um, but today we are going to talk a little bit about counseling introverted and highly sensitive adults and teens with Tracy Gillett. Tracy, thank you for joining me. And how are you today? Uh, I'm good. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on, Jade. Yeah, definitely feeling a bit nervous, but glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no reason to be nervous. It's just a straight out little conversation and you look out the window and see the nice falling snowflakes and that'll calm you down. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> okay. I always like to talk a little bit about how we were introduced and uh, I had Ken Goldstein on this show and I was introduced to him from Samantha Leonard. So, I mean, Ken introduced us, we sat for coffee uh, once and then you came to Founders Coffee and we've actually started a a really nice relationship. So I'm, I'm very uh, happy that Ken introduced us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And Ken's, Ken's quite a nice man. So a good connection there. Yes. And actually this, uh, this Friday he is, I'm going to be introducing him at uh, the community now magazine, uh, mental health event. I'm co emceeing that and hosting a panel discussion. So if anybody wants tickets for that, um, you can go to the community now magazine, uh, log on and just, you know, if you want to give some tickets away to an entrepreneur or to some students, you can let us know that, but it's a very, there's going to be some great speakers and there'll also be some great stories told. Um, so if you really want to check that out, please feel free. Uh, but I'll give a little introduction here to Tracy and we will get at it. She is the founder of Quiet Pathways. She is a fellow introvert and therapist that helps introverted teens and adults manage, manage anxiety, find success in the workplace and school, and help build better relationships. She also consults with parents to help them better understand their quiet teens. You know, taking away the stigma of being introverted and seeing the gifts it has to offer is her passion. And I think that also ties into what we're going to be doing with the community now magazine this weekend, but I mean, helping people who struggle with, uh, you know, being introverted and obviously you're, you're, you're out there and you say you're an introvert yourself. Like, how are you able to turn this into a business? Yeah. Like when I first started counseling, I could see like once I understood that I was introverted, cause it's this interesting thing that some people that are introverted don't know that they are. Yeah. And then I discovered when I was about 40 that I was introverted. And then that helped me make so much sense about some of my behaviors. And then I started to pull that into counseling when I was still working for an agency. And then could really see the benefit of somebody when they're struggling with, you know, depression, anxiety. They've lost somebody through death mm -hmm. to also help them understand how they're impacted in terms of being introverted. And because we actually see the world differently, we feel the world differently. So then to me, it made sense that counseling then would be different for them. Yeah. And yeah, so when I, when my people come and, you know, I'm able to help them, but for me, having the understanding of introversion really seems to help fill that gap that, that I hadn't really seen out there. So, I, I mean, you say you found out that you were an introvert at the age of 40. How, why, I mean, was there a reason why? Was there not, was it not something that people looked at, you know, when, when like we were in our teens or, or pre-adolescence area, or was that just something that you're like, oh my goodness, this is, this is me. Yeah, it gets pretty common for people my age to not know that they were introverted. And sometimes in university, they would find out they would do a psychology, like personality test. Um, yeah, yeah. So then without having that information, they can feel quite different, misunderstood. So yeah, so it is quite common for people not to know that until they get to a bit later stage. I do think now, because there's more information out there, people kind of like teenagers now know that they're introverted if they are which mm -hmm. yeah which i think is quite helpful for them oh definitely i think knowing if there is something or a reason why you are a little bit quiet or why you suffer from anxiety i mean i know our daughter has and we've had some conversations about about that and and taking people's advice and therapist's advice and saying yeah I mean, you know do this try this you know work with her this way and, and it's been really helpful um even they we were told to get a dog and that would really help her and it really has helped her so just something to to rely on and almost someone to talk to and just relax her when she pets it it's 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 amazing to see how one little suggestion can change a person's i don't want to say outlook but they're just the way they are yeah and i think that's a great thing that once it's understood that a quieter person just needs a few different things the as you said the big difference those smaller things make no absolutely so i, I know i mean sometimes 
you know, they talk about introverts seem to struggle with communication and why is that? And how do you, you work with them to communicate better? Yeah. And the first place I usually start is helping them understand why they struggle like that. And uh, like our brain is actually wired differently, which I find the brain really fascinating. So as an introvert, it takes us longer to pull up information. So if I'm asked a question, it's going to take me longer to actually get that answer than somebody who's more extroverted. So we can, and I think like even in staff meetings where people, so an idea has been put out there, they're sitting there trying to think about different responses to that. By the time the introvert's ready to share their idea, the conversation has already moved on. So then do they now bring the conversation back to that? Do they just like, ah, oh, maybe it didn't really matter. It wasn't a good idea. So sometimes the pace of conversation is too fast. Okay. And then as well, introverts can be really overwhelmed when a lot of things are happening at the same time. So even if it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but then they're, they're now aware of um, you're looking a bit distracted, maybe you're looking overwhelmed, they're, they're pulling in all that information at the same time as having the conversation. So again, helping them be aware of everything that's happening for them in the moment, then you're looking at some ways like how do you calm yourself down while you're talking you know, and you know, it is okay to pull a conversation back so you can share that point. So helping them be more comfortable with what they need to. And you know, sometimes in, in our world, we give so much value to communicating in that more extroverted face-to-face -face way. Yeah. But then saying, you know, maybe you can send that email to start the conversation, right? As a, especially if it's a more difficult conversation mm -hmm. um, and we're great at avoiding conflict. So, which, I mean, there's good and bad to that, yeah. but when we really do need to have those difficult conversations and we don't, we get ourselves into a lot of trouble as introverts. So then again, helping them, how do you manage that big overwhelm and tell your partner that you're upset with them or tell your boss, you know, you're overwhelmed and you need some help. So. Well, that is yeah. interesting. So now, now that you say that, do do introverts require a, a different type of therapy, a different, um, you know, way to talk to them? Yeah. And I don't think they require a different kind of therapy because for all of us, the better, it's really about the right match between the client and therapist. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's important for the therapist to understand what introversion really is and how we do live in the world differently. Because some of our behaviors might look alarming when they're actually not. Okay. Right. So, you know, I've had clients where, you know, maybe a parent has passed away, you know, their partner has broken up with them and they're spending a lot of time on their own. That's actually quite normal for an introvert, as long as they don't stay there too long. Mm -hmm. Where if you look at from that extroverted way, it might be, well, you know, it's their third weekend in a row that they've stayed home. They're not returning my calls. It's, but they might just be really taking care of themselves. So I think the more a therapist understands what's good, what's healthy behavior and what's concerning behavior for an introvert is what's more important. Okay. No, I, I that, that's fascinating. Um, I mean, I always talk about uh, and, and promote when I'm out there. And, and I mean, I, I believe that, you know, in the world of entrepreneurship, you, you can, you understand it. I mean, there's lots of ups and downs and, and struggles and sometimes it can be a, uh, a lonely place. And I always say asking for help is not a sign of weakness. And it's something that, you know, you try and have people and you know, being able to connect with each other so they're not stuck in their home, home all the time. And, and, and I guess it is, I mean, that must be even be a little even harder if you're an entrepreneur and an introvert. Is there a little extra struggle there? Yeah. And you mean to, to reach out and ask for help? Yeah. For, for somebody that, you know, if you're, if you're stuck in your basement by yourself working on your business and you never seem to get out there and it, and it's already a struggle for you, is there, is there a little more advice that you could give someone if they're struggling with that? Yeah. And I think, so I think first it's really not like that's a common behavior for introverts that we we'll, we love our comfort zone. And I think like all of us yeah. as humans love our comfort zone, um, but we can get too comfortable and then, you know, we can have the best business and be the best kept secret. Right. So which means our business isn't doing very well. So, um, yeah, like, so you, like you have to get out and network. Um, you, have to, you have to build connections. And, and if you're struggling, like if, if the idea of that just sends you into, you know, anxiety, overwhelm, then, then I think it is important to reach out to help. And, you know, whether that's a therapist, a business coach, that can really push you 
uh, like, and to try on new behaviors. But I, what I find is the best is taking little steps. Yeah. Right. So like sometimes I think, well, this month I'm going to go to five networking events. <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'm going to end up at five networking events. But if I can make it to one networking event in a month. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, can I connect with one or two people that are really good connections for me? So still honoring that I'm an introvert, but I can't run a business from my basement. Yeah. No, that's a very, that's a very good point. I mean, small steps, baby steps that probably that really helps. I'm talking to Tracy of the um, founder of quiet pathways. If you'd want to get to check out her website, it is www.quietpathways.com. It's in the um, comment section. You can just click on the link uh, there and it'll take you directly to the website. Um, so, I mean, it seems that, it, you know, introversion hasn't been you know, well understood. What is the impact that you've seen or experienced yourself because of this? Yeah, and I think a lot of introverted people are walking around feeling defective. There's one, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the book now. I think the woman who wrote it is Laura Holgi, and she calls it the failed extrovert. So you're always trying to be something that you're not, and we can't ever achieve it. So we're always in that place of failure. Um, my younger sister is quite extroverted, you know, lovely woman, can build relationships quickly. And then I grew up thinking that she was the right way to be and I was the wrong way to be. Mm -hmm. And I realized now the impact that had on me and you know, like lots of therapy I had to go through to get to a place of there's actually really great things about me, but the world told me that I needed to be different. You know, that question, why are you so quiet? And when introvert people hear that, what lots of us hear is what's wrong with you, right? So, um, cause that sounds like we need to be different. It's not okay to be quiet. It's not okay to be observant. And what feels natural for us, we're told isn't natural. And then what we're told is natural doesn't feel natural for us. Yeah. So we're kind of always in the space of um, just really feeling out of place unless we're by ourselves. And you imagine in that person, how they show up in relationships, how they show up at work, how they show up in parenting, when you feel like you're never good enough. So I think it's, there's a huge impact when introversion isn't understood and, and when it's judged in a negative light. No, for sure. I, I, I can definitely see that. I mean, it's, uh, I know Kathy and I have constant conversations about, uh, you know, about Ray and, and she's not, not bad at all. She's got, you know, she friends, she goes out, she does things, but we can kind of see her sometimes, you know, slide. And if you want to call it that comfort zone, we never really viewed it as a comfort zone. We kind of viewed it more as, you know, a little more anxiety. And I think, you know, especially with her going to uh, late French immersion this year and the stress of learning a second language. And, you know, it's, 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 I mean, in my opinion, it's put a lot of undue um, stress on, on a 12 year old, but uh, you know, kind of watching her walk through it. But I mean, we have a lot of open conversations and talk and, and I think that really helps as well. Oh yeah. And I think that's so important because I know with my, my oldest, he's 13 and a pretty introverted kid. And, you know, so I just really talk about, yeah, like, of course you are overwhelmed sometimes and yeah. you need time away. Yeah. And it's, yeah. How so much good can happen in the home. Just what, like, just how you're saying with your daughter. Yeah. And it's, uh, I don't know if it's because I was a, a hockey coach when I was younger and, and, and you know, watched uh, a lot of different kids through a lot of different areas and a lot of different uh, age groups, uh, you know, for all, over 20 years, but it just seemed to kind of being able to, you know, click in and, and have that conversation with her. So it's always, uh, you never know where you're going to learn something that might help you later in life. <laughs> so, oh, completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause I can tell you, I wasn't thinking about that when I was, you know, 21, 22, 23 coaching, you know, midget AAA and those types of things and thinking about, Oh, how's this going to help me when I'm a father? <laughs> so, oh, right. <laughs> you didn't know you were training for parents. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, I'm talking to Tracy, um, quiet pathways. You can click on the, her website in the comments section. So I guess Tracy, what's next for yourself and quiet pathways? And the area that I want to move into, and I've started doing it a bit, is helping parents and teachers understand quiet teens. Because what I find is, so when I get a teen in my office, that in, like after the first hour, I might know more about them than their parents do. Mm -hmm. and, and that just kind of breaks my heart that, because um, really, the, the parents are the best bet to help, to help our kids do well. So wanting to offer 
and not so much counseling to parents, but more consulting with parents to help them learn more about their introverted teen and then how they can support them better, what's normal behavior, what's concerning behavior. And, um, and then the same with teachers too. I've been meeting with some teachers to talk about how, how they view the quiet kids in their class. Um, and really um, learned a lot actually from the teachers too. And then how, how to use that information to help other teachers to better understand quiet kids so we're not, because even when my kids, my, when my oldest was younger, the comment was always, he's a great student, but he doesn't talk enough. He needs to talk more. So I would check in with my son. I'm like, are you, do you think you need to talk more? He was like, no. And he's happy. He's content. He has friends. Yeah. So, so his behavior looked alarming, but it actually wasn't. Right. So then helping, wanting to get more information out there. So, so when kids really need help, we know like, they really do need help here, but we're just going to help them understand themselves better over here. Yeah. And so. No, I, I mean, yeah. imagine that you can le learn a lot from the teachers being on the front line, so to say, and, mm -hmm. and there and dealing with all different types of personalities and kids and bullying and all the things that go on at a, you know elementary and high school. So I'm sure they're probably, yeah. they got a wealth of knowledge. Oh, yeah. And, and all the positive things that they say about these quiet kids. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And good that, and so far the teachers I've talked to under, like seem to understand introverted yeah. kids. Yeah, not always. The one teacher said he calls them the reluctant askers. So those are the kids that need help but don't ask for help. I'm like, oh, like I just love that term. But then looking for ways that how to help that kid then, how do you ask for help when you need help? When, when we go back to you and I talking about communication, right? When you're feeling overwhelmed, how do you still talk? Yeah. Right, to like help kids with that skill as well. No, for sure. That's, uh, that's very true. So I always, um, you know, we're coming up to our last question here and I'd, I'd like to kind of put a little spin on it with you. So I guess I would like to say, you know, if you had one piece of advice for a small business entrepreneur start, startup, what would it be? But also maybe if you give us a little tip and then maybe share if someone's watching or we're going to see this after, after, and they are introverted, what would you give an introverted person would it, would the same would the advice be the same or would it would it be different? Um, yeah. So so first the advice and then would the advice be different? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I think it's important to love what you do because I find like I almost think about my business twenty four seven. So if I didn't enjoy what I was doing, <laughs> it would it would feel pretty terrible. So um, yeah, like to like follow that passion, but then also really checking out are people interested in it and yeah. you know sometimes there's been things that I've wanted to offer people that nobody wanted and I kept trying so <laughs> you know when people say no listen to them <laughs> when people say yes listen to them <laughs> yeah so um yeah and it's it's a lot harder than I thought but it's much more worthwhile than I thought too so and I think I don't know if that would be any different for an introvert person versus an expert. I think the one difference though, as introverts, we like to be really, sh like we like to be really sure that we're good at what we do. Because mm -hmm. um, we're, not, we're not known as risk takers. So I think that's something for people to reflect on is that, do you stop yourself from doing things because, because you're moving into the unknown? And if you're running your own business, to me it feels like I, I live in the unknown sometimes. Right. And having to build that tolerance for, you know, if I go to this networking event, it might be a complete flop. It yeah. might be amazing. Right. I, I won't know that until I go. Yeah. And yeah, you know, where I think an expert can, it can still have the same experience, but jump over that, that fear quicker, I believe, than an introvert can. And um, yeah, and just how important it is for an introvert to still do that. And, and now there's so many great resources out there, like Facebook. There's lots of private Facebook groups for introvert entrepreneurs. So, you know, if, you, if people haven't discovered those, hang out with them and see what you like, what you don't like. But there's lots of there's lots of good support out there now for business owners that are more introverted. Oh, you know what? That, I mean, that's great. Maybe what uh, what we'll do after this, um, uh, you know, after this interview is over, uh, maybe you can post some of those in the in the comment section. That would be awesome. And then I can tag that and just make sure and mention that mm -hmm. thing if you do. And here's some resources that you guys can check out or some uh, groups that you can uh, can join for some for some support. 
Yeah, yeah. And I'll definitely post my two favorite in there. And then it, like some others that I, I don't necessarily participate in, but are yeah. quite good as well. Oh, no, I think that's great. It's, uh, it's always nice to, 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 you know, for someone, you know, maybe that's the first step that they need, right? Just clicking, clicking on something and on, on a platform they feel comfortable with and, and just watching for a while and then maybe participating if they, if they feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a lot of where I've gained my confidence is like showing up in these groups and getting positive responses. So then it's helped me then reach out more, you know, going to networking events, showing up more on LinkedIn. So yeah. kind of that ripple effect. For sure. <laughs> it's, it is a ripple effect, right? Once you realize it's not that mm -hmm. bad, it's not scary. It's yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can survive. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on today and, and sharing your, your knowledge and your stories. And I think that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're introverted or not. It, it is, is something that everybody needs help in business. And, 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 as, and as I say, asking for help is not a sign of weakness. So thank you for coming on and sharing the story. And, um, and, I, and I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Yeah, and thanks so much, Jade, for having me on. I appreciate that. No, that's awesome. So, uh, I, I, everybody, will uh, I want to give one more plug for the community now um, uh, mental health event, which is this Friday, starting at around nine o'clock. You can go to the community now website, and they will be able you'll be able to buy the tickets from there. If you want to donate tickets to fellow entrepreneurs or to uh, students, please feel free. That there's a a section that you can do that and. I, I highly recommend coming out. There'll be a lot of people sharing some very personal stories and, and, and I think it's going to be a, a great event for people to come out and listen to and, uh, and learn from. So again, Friday community, community now event, uh, again, Tracy, thank you very much for coming on and I hope everybody has a great day. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jade. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.